my name is Jane Treger. With me here is Dale Schwartz. We are in Leverett, Massachusetts, in the gallery of the Leverett Crafts and Arts Center. And uh, surrounding us is the art of Guillermo Cuellar, and in the other room, the work of Dale Schwartz. Dale and Guillermo are husband and wife. Uh, they're both artists and therapists. And um, surrounding us is an exhibit called Yes, Life is Art. Um, today, in part two of this series, we're examining Dale's work, and she will be telling us what it is about. Dale. Hmm. Thank you, Jane, for inviting me. Um, I'm showing my, my excerpts from my sketchbook that talk about my feelings and thoughts of being a, um, a caregiver. And as I also called myself a medical concierge, Guillermo and I were on um, parallel and interconnected but different journeys during the last three years when he's had this, uh, this cancer. And um, all along throughout, you know, for the last, I don't know, many, 25 years, I have kept sketchbooks. And um, so it's part of my practice to, to express my feelings and draw my feelings and draw my inner and outer expression of what's going on. So I, um, we thought it would be really very relevant and helpful uh, to, in addition to having Guillermo's work shown in this exhibit, to have the, the other side of the coin, to have, give a 360 view of um, not only what it's like to be someone who's going through this kind of treatment or an illness and dealing with all that uh, there is to deal with, but also what it's like to be in the role of a caregiver and expressing the thoughts, thoughts and feelings around that. Um, the, um, our story, uh, sadly, is not a unique story. So many people are dealing with the kinds of issues that we're dealing with. It may be about illness, it may be about other kinds of, of issues where um, someone is in a helping role and the other was in the receiving role. So that's, um, that's why we decided to, uh, to put these together and to, uh, to share about this. As an art therapist, mm -hmm. is there something you learned in this process <laughs> as your own client? <laughs> yeah, I continue to learn every day about this process. Uh -huh. uh, it, just, it, it just truly has reinforced the power of creativity and um, the, the, um, the place uh, within myself where I was able to access our, a strength, a capacity for strength, even in the face of, of so much difficulty and suffering. So, and we all have that capacity. We all have the ability to, to express, to create in, in a way that um, can be healing and constructive. So yeah, I have seven panels because I selected, as it turns out, 80 drawings. Uh, from my sketchbook over this period of the last three years. And um, so this uh, one that I'll begin with was at the very beginning of when uh, Guillermo was, we found out that he had a tumor um, and we were just completely stunned. It was not anything that was on our radar. Or we needed to take a crash course in dealing with cancer and medical situation. So this um, is one of the first pieces that I did around that. And um, basically, I was just seeing red. <laughs> I was really angry. red. Grab my red crayon and uh, started scribbling here and then underlined it with black um, and then wrote these words. Oh, shit. This wasn't the new we, I, were planning on. And then um, I had a magazine nearby in my studio, and I just I opened a page, and there was uh, these a number of words, but these are the ones that turned out to be most significant. They're very small, but zero in on that. Um, it says, change your attitude. Your brain is plastic. And that was really key to me, because what I recognize is the only thing I have control over is my attitude. I didn't create these as fine works of art. They are raw, spontaneous expression. These, these were not meant for public consumption. No, they were like, not. I see. Exactly. Right. Um, this, was now, this was an image that is a road <clears throat> with the two yellow lines, and then there's fog, so you can't see what's ahead. And that was exactly how Guillermo and I were feeling. We had no clue of what was ahead at all. 
even within the next hour sometimes. So I wrote day 21 of this saga. It was like a siege, actually. Um, and here I wrote, plans and dreams for future all up in the air. So we were in the, the very beginning stage of, of panic and terror, and I'll just go back and reference this one. This was also the same day, actually. Um, life in abeyance. Everything about our life was totally upended. And you can see there's like this visual chaos here in terms of the colors. And there's horizontal, there's vertical, there's you know, colors of varying sorts. Um, not necessarily connected. And that was how, that, that really, to me, was how, you felt. how I was feeling, yes. Guillermo had his art expression during the journey, and you had your art expression. Yeah, it was really wonderful for me. It was, it was really important and powerful for me to have a place where I could park these feelings, where I could express and explore these feelings. And that's one of the powers of using art in this way, uh, or visual expression in this way. Um, because it gives me an opportunity to reflect back what's going on. And as I go around and, and describe some of the others, I'll talk about some different ways that, you know, when I, when I just took, um, like, all right, I'm going to talk about this one. <laughs> um, this one, oftentimes I would begin with not, not knowing what, was, what it was I even wanted to express. It's that moment of trust, trusting my own creative process. And this was a very difficult um, day, I remember, and I just grabbed up a black crayon and started scribbling. And just the physicality of taking that crayon and moving it around um, shifts something uh, internally within me. And then, I, I still didn't know what I was doing, and then what, as I was doing it, then I started, I took another color, I added blue, and this is difficult to see because then the words came to me as I was doing it, where is the light? And you, agree, you can see, I wrote that in yellow, but you can very barely see it. And it was so reflective of where, what I was experiencing in my life in an hour life at that moment. Where, where is the light? So um, this one is, um, this is a list of all the reasons I felt grateful. Even though we were in a really difficult situation dealing with um, Guillermo's um, cancer, and at this point he had had um, surgery. Um, I, I wrote a list of all the reasons why I was appreciative and grateful. And they include things like that we have um, health insurance, that we live in a place that um, we're able to go to a hospital and it's not being bombed. Uh, that we had so much help and support in going through this. So and this also is, that it wasn't winter. And it was <laughs> summer. Winter. Yes. And so this we were going to Boston. And then you colored in different colors? Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Um, so tell me why there's a cow here. Okay, so the cow is, um, and again, this is an example of just starting to draw something spontaneously. I like cows. So I drew this cow, and I was noticing it was very elongated as I was drawing it. Um, and then I realized, oh, the caption came to me. One long cow stretched, like me overstretched, which is how I was feeling in my life, overwhelmed with all that I was doing and needed to be doing. You were the um, concierge. I was the medical concierge. That's what, that is the, the phrase that I use for myself. Uh -huh. Yes, because it was often a 24-hour job, you know, taking care of everything that needed to be done, arranging. Let, let me ask you something. Care. Did you share some of these drawings with Guillermo oh, yeah. along the way? Yeah, I mean, it, depending, yes, I did. Uh, yeah, he's uh -huh. seen all of them. And I shared them with friends. It was also a way for me to communicate what was going on because though so many experiences are universal in life that we don't have to go through them to understand them, it, it turns out that this one isn't necessarily, I didn't feel it was like that. And many people would say, I can't even imagine how, uh, how this is for you. And so I would, I would share this with, with friends and family, and they would get more of a sense of it. I, so, I know what's going on here. I'm the friend now looking at this. I say, oh, you need to sort of get picked up and put into action every day. Exactly, exactly. Here, okay. um, there's somebody operating a hoist, and it's saying, hoist her up. And that was exactly how I felt. Um, daily resuscitation, reconstructing myself cell by cell, for the next day. And this is a list of all the to-dos, well, not uh, all the to-dos, a short list of <laughs> some of the to-dos. Yeah, yeah, right. um, I often gave myself a time to have a respite. 
And men, there are many drawings in here that are not about what was going on, but it was this a pause, a sense of doing something that was this, gave myself some relief. And this I remember doing because I was just, you know, opened the paint box and loved these colors um, and uh, just wanted to play around with those colors. And so there, there's also, you know, the, the joy. So you're feeding and yourself here too. Feeding myself, it was very, it's very nurturing. I mean, creating any of this, even the diff expressing the difficult feelings, uh, there's a sense of um, nurturance and satisfaction because there is an opportunity to, you know, par put, as I mentioned, park something on the paper, have a sense of though I had no control of anything pretty much in my life in many ways, um, that were significant. Yeah, this was a difficult day, and I was feeling very sad. Um, sad. I mean, a lot of what I thought about is the the possibility of losing my beloved husband, Guillermo. I mean, that was um, very, you know, very very um, present in my consciousness. So, um, yeah, this was um, during. I think there was something about that having that that awareness during that time. So this was the same series. But at the same time, I remember um, visually, I enjoyed how these look. And I enjoy, I took, there was a pleasure in doing them. Um, this is an image that comes, uh, shows up a lot in the different um, drawings that I've done. It's about the up and down. There's the, um, the ups and downs of dealing with life, with having you know, a tumor in my husband's body. Um, and all the, the, um, the different feelings that go along with that. Is up good and down bad, or is up, the other way up around? Up can be good. You know what? Sometimes you don't really know. Right. <laughs> Speaking they of vary. things that are helter-skelter, what's going on here? Okay, so over here, um, this is how I was feeling. Um, the, the phrase, sometimes when I would, um, a phrase would come to me, and that's how I would then start to draw something. So the phrase, Stray socks populate my life. I think it was the phrase, the phrase stray socks. That was how I was feeling about my life. Uh -huh. Are everywhere. And so I just started drawing this. And again, it was this feeling of, ah, oh, yes, this, is, this really captures what I was feeling. There were all these details that even when I felt like I accomplished something and yes, I managed to make that appointment, there would be something else um, another appointment elsewhere that got changed, and then we'd have to reschedule and figure out the transportation or rearrange so you, things. You can get very busy with the organizational stuff around an illness and sort of almost lose track. I mean, occasionally you talked about, you know, I may lose my, my beloved husband. But here we'd, we get preoccupied by the stray socks of life. You know, it, there were many different levels. It's multi-level. I, I wouldn't say that I ever lost track of that. No, I, I, <laughs> was I wasn't there. suggesting that. But the pages, <laughs> the pages give us glimpses into the other aspects. Yeah. Right? Yes. Um, as again, there's, there's, it's multi. Uh, it's like a 360 view. You know, it's yes. all of it, almost all of the time. And I think that's part of the exhaustion of dealing with it. Well, here's something exhausting. Yeah, here's something exhausting. So I could very quickly flip between feeling a sense of calm, and here's the blue calm, like a calm lake, and over here being in an emergency. Um, and because there were different things that were happening physically that, for Guillermo, um, that um, very quickly then would flip. It's like, okay, we have to deal with this immediately. Now. Now. So, that flip would happen, you know, sometimes within a day or a half a day, and um, you know, flipping back and forth and being able to do whatever I could to bring myself back to that place of calm. I notice here a little notice that is very poignant. During this period, your parents died. Yes, there was an in-between year where um, Guillermo was in remission, um, and then the. Um, they were ill and passed away. So at this point, um, Guillermo was back in treatment and he was receiving radiation for every day for six weeks. So we were living in Boston for those six weeks. And um, it, was a very, it was a difficult period. And 
I, the caption here is my medicalized life, month four and a half of, of that phase, basically. And is this an actual building? Yeah, this is like a maze. So these are the different buildings at Mass General Hospital. That every day we would walk from our apartment um, through this maze and these hallways uh, to get to where his treatment was. And so this, is, this describes that. Um, it's the names of the different buildings. So each day, a new mini medical issue, the maze of cancer. And this is waiting, appointments, scheduling, um, life ticking away. Is this where you run away to? Yeah, this was, yeah. <laughs> so one day I was waiting for Guillermo and, uh, while he was having one of the treatments. And um, there was a, a painting on the wall. And I uh, took a look at it and I thought, I want to be there. So I got inspired and I had my sketchbook with me and so I created my own version of it. And here's, this really speaks of something about the power of, of visual expression. As I was doing this, I could feel myself becoming calmer. I put myself in this setting, literally uh -huh. in this setting, this peaceful country the, setting, instead of being in the bowels of Mass General Hospital. <laughs> This. Moving along to this panel, is that something about the blow up? No, this was um, the re this is um, resiliency. Yes. Does it come in a so, can? It should, it, right? It should. Yes, it absolutely, absolutely should. Yes. Pills would be so, good too. <laughs> yes. This entire body wash, right? Oh, a resiliency spray. Resiliency spray. Uh -huh. So, um, yeah, I was thinking one of the things I, you know, tapped into some levity. Uh -huh. along the way in this. And, um, so I wanted to create a can of resiliency spray where I could just spray myself all the time as a way to, to you know, continue to um, tap into my, my resiliency. So I wrote, um, resiliency spray for all unfortunate occasions. Uh -huh. Yes. Is this a this logical one? next step? So... Yeah, I think it is. Uh-huh. Um, so one of, um, one of my philosophies in life is this. Um, this expression came to me. When happiness comes, take a big bite. Uh-huh. So um, I, this is what I drew. Because along the way, though there, there was so much pain and difficulty, um, there was also times of joy, of, of deep connection between Guillermo and I, of course, um, among our community of friends, of family. There was so much um, to be grateful for. So, and um, of, of just pure joy in the midst of, of suffering. I think this is a logical next step. Mm -hmm. this, um, this is about gratitude. It says, being held in a feathered nest. So I created this one day when I was actually sitting in the studio with Guillermo and some friends, and we were all just playing with art materials together. And again, I didn't know what I was going to be drawing, um, but I started drawing this and turned into a nest, and then I put some eggs inside, um, which is exactly how I is feel. Is that you and Guillermo? I think it's Guillermo and I, yes. And I think I could speak for Guillermo also in saying that we felt very much held in a feathered nest by our larger community, by all the help and support that we had uh, from our um, medical team, from our um, just a far-ranging community and helpers and so forth and healers. I mean, how do, how do other people do what you just did? Yeah. Um, you know, there's so many ways we have of being creative in, in our world, in our lives. And this is one form, visual expression is one form. Um, but really, this is not about artistic expression. This is about making a mark. Or, you know, people choose to mold some clay or whatever material um, people feel drawn to. But this is so simple and portable. Um, there's just pencils that I often use and carried with me, colored pencils. If you find yourself um, drawn to do something like this, just Give yourself permission. It's really about permission. It isn't about creating works of art. So many people, you know, have, have said to me over the last 
many, many years I've been doing this work, oh, I can't draw. I think that is wonderful. That's really great because then you have really nothing to even have to unlearn. You can just allow yourself to jump in wherever you are. So permission to create. Do you do workshops with for people? I do. I, I this I've done them for many years and what, many what is the versions. Name of your but um, four times a year I offer women creating day and tonight. It's a week and workshop for for women. Uh huh. Yeah. Uh-huh. Um, because they're the ones who are most often drawn to come. I see. And uh, we just made that choice. I just made uh-huh. that choice. Yeah. We use, I mean, for years we. Um, we ran workshops for men and women. And oh, you and Guillermo together? We did, yeah, through the mm-hmm. New England Art Therapy Institute and the Center for Creative Consciousness. Um, and I will say the majority of people who came were women. We, we had men now and then. So but. you are uniquely um, suited and equipped to be dealing, unfortunately, with this terrible piece of news that, you, that you've received in your family. You actually have tools in your pocket to be able to handle it. Many of us don't. Many of us struggle. So it's really beautiful to see the outcome yeah. and, and also to see how really easy it is. It's not, mm-hmm. as you said before, it's not art for public consumption. Mm-hmm. It's your sketchbook. I mean, here it looks like you just glued in something. Yes, yes. And, and for heaven's sakes, any of us could do that. Any of, any of us can do that. And what I also say is that this isn't a panacea. <laughs> Making art is not a panacea. No, but this it was, helps. They were, it helps, and, and I also um, meditated and did various spiritual practices, cried a lot, um, walked, sat outside in nature, and had made incredible art. friends, and made art. Yes. Thank you very much. Gail. You're welcome. Thank you.